Next on the list, we'll talk about quickly here. Hellbound on Netflix. I'm not sure if you're aware, but there's another blockbuster South Korean TV series on Netflix at the moment called Hellbound, coming straight off the back of Squid Game, of course, that blew everyone's mind and that I kind of reviewed on my podcast and I said it was a little bit overrated. I understand why people loved it because we've been starved of good TV. Right, I'm actually gonna yeah speak about that later about Succession, but we've been scarred of good TV. The TV on right now is mediocre. People are raving. The f- most thing I heard people raving most about is stuff like Ted Lasso, which is pretty average. But again, it's an easy watch. Um, it's kind of you know you can kind of turn your brain off and kind of you know snigger snigger away or snigger 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 chuckle away as you're watching the series. But when it comes to Squid Game and Hellbound, the reason why they captured everyone's imagination because that's it. They were absolutely creative they were original they actually seemed like a tv series that somebody spent time imagining different scenarios that weren't just common tropes or traits that you've basically seen in every other series you know that came before it they actually tried to do something new and interesting and guess what it kind of worked bits of squid game were good bits of hellbound hellbound were good but overall pretty decent tv series especially considering it's a foreign tv series that you have to watch either with subtitles or dubbed personally when it comes to foreign tv series i like to always watch it um subtitled i don't ever like to watch it dubbed the freaks who like watching it dubbed are weird to me Um, i always want to read and just hear the actual native speakers speak in their language i know you miss a lot with the translations anyway because there's loads of things that get lost in translation um little phrases and the way they kind of you know say particular sentences and whatnot it happens a lot in gomorrah if you watch gomorrah and you know a little bit of italian you'll know the subtitles aren't the greatest especially because of the dialect of italian they they speak in naples is slightly different to what you know uh, regular italians in kind of rome or milan speak so there's a little bit of a you know um lack of translation that way or you just can't translate certain phrases you know back and forth it doesn't really make that much sense i'm sure the same thing happened with squid game and hellbound but overall as a story as a plot character development you know whatever it may be you got what was going on and it gripped everyone it took everybody by the fucking balls and i think hellbound might be the same very very original sort of idea essentially um it's a tv series based on what do you call it you said like eternal damnation right like the day of judgment so essentially people in south korea for some reason um this weird ghostly figure pops up around them in their lives and basically tells them when they're gonna die it's either gonna be you know imminently in like the next 10 seconds or it might be sometime in the future like 20 years and essentially then you know they have a time between them to basically get their affairs in order before those three demons there on the right hand side jump out from the flipping ground and chase them around and beat them bloody for some reason they have to beat them up before they basically eviscerate them and it's basically into ash and condemn them into hell or basically right it's either hell or they just basically die on the spot i'm not sure what happens to their souls but something happens right so it's, it's a bit of a gruesome tv series but what the interesting part about it is that they've done a little spin obviously in the modern day in that for whatever reason this like weird um cult Again, these are all spoiler alerts, by the way, (laughs) because I'm spending the whole thing. But what makes me interesting is that um, this weird cult um, basically latches on to to these um, these, these demons and basically someone in that cult decides to go around and um, secretly do their own versions of whatever these hellbound monsters do as a way to kind of justify their, their own cause. So that they'd go around and they'd kind of kidnap somebody that might be a pedophile and, you know, um, put them in an incinerator and then dump their body somewhere random so people would think it was those demons. So people would be like, oh yeah, shit, that person was da 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 So everyone that's dying is obviously somebody that did something bad. But obviously that's not how it works, right? Um, we all know, you know, that's one of the common questions sort of atheists have, right? If you believe in Christ, why does Christ give babies cancer and shit or leukemia, right? And condemn them to hell in that regard or condemn them to, you know, whatever, right? Whatever. There, there's a conversation there to be having in terms of um, religion. But just in terms of an original TV series, that premise is fucking brilliant, right? And news here, courtesy of Variety, says that Hellbound creator Yong Sang-ho details season two plans, teases third zombie movie in a world of trains. So in World of Train to Busan, because the same director that did that um, movie, which I've heard is incredibly scary. But again, I don't do horror movies. I wouldn't say Hellbound was a horror. I'd say it was more like a hollow 
horror thriller slash sort of thing. It's not the most gory or scary thing in the world either. The monsters are quite, you know, scary the first time you see them, but after a while you get kind of used to it. Um, it's quite funny when you see the people getting beaten up before they get eviscerated. That's always quite funny. It's like, they're going to hell anyway. Just send them to hell. Why do you have to fucking beat them bloody and blue and fling them off the side of a fucking building before you, you know, burn them to hell? But hey, um, let's quickly read this article. It says Netflix um, latest genre offering from Korea, dark sci-fi thriller. Okay, that's what it's called. It's called a sci-fi thriller. Okay, I'd call it a horror thriller, but a sci-fi thriller. Hellbrand doesn't waste any time in getting straight to the action. In the first minutes of the pilot, giant bellowing, um, billowing, sorry, um, demons think the hope meets evil Michelin man erupt from the heart of Seoul to torture and scorch to death one of the damned members of the public. That is literally damned. The show is set in an alternate reality in which angels appear before an individuals. Okay, those things are angels. Interesting. That's one thing I was going to ask. They don't really have angels depicted too tough on there in terms of you know taking you the opposite way it's just all going to hell um when the time comes the demons barrel onto earth to meet out their grisly um death sentence in the orbit is the new truth a cult-like group of individuals that supports the supernatural arbiters uh, justice led by a legit led by an insidious grandmaster jong sin so hellbound creator young sang ho is perhaps best known internationally for the date um to date for the acclaimed zombie thrillers train to busan and peninsula the former live action film starring gong ho as a father shepherding his daughter to safety amid zombie apocalypse was preceded by an animated prequel called soul station released the same year similarly hellbound began life as a two-part anime Made film before being sent into a webtoon to, for career digital platform Naver. The latter provided a handy proof of concept for the live action series that was ultimately commissioned by Netflix. The show is currently the stream's top non English language series globally, just ahead of the other non Korean TV sensation Squid Game. Wow, it's commissioned by Netflix. Okay, I'm actually curious to actually see what the animation um, version of this is actually what is actually like. Because I imagine it's quite gory and probably a lot better than the actual live action. But the live action I thought was pretty decent. Again, without watching the first. In interview with Variety, working on a translator provided by Netflix, Yun describes, discusses the origin of Hellbound, plans for season two and teases a potential third installment. Okay, cool. Let's see what season two is saying. I want to quickly skip to that question. What is saying? Number protagonist. Do you have a concept? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, cool. Could that be what uh, with Netflix in the future? What are the plans for season two? I will say that is true. The process of working with Netflix was very enjoyable on my end. They are very much agreed to and related to my covert vision, but they also created an environment where I didn't have to think about anything else aside from focusing on my creativity in terms of distribution or when or how to release a series. Because Hellband is based on the original webtoons, my partner Choi Kyu Suk and I have decided that story towards so the story afterwards will be told first for uh, first through the webtoon and as for whether we would want to return into another live action series that's something that we will need to have further discussions on as you know we have already just we only just released hellbound season one so we didn't have any time to discuss the issue with netflix so i would say that this is something we need further discussion on i like how for some reason i, I guess because the contracts for squid game and hellbound were initially always one season that's what netflix always does right they always kind of just bang out a season if it doesn't work after free they'll just dump it right they just keep hammering through money again but i guess with these South Korean ones because they're all original series and they're foreign TV series you know maybe the investment is not as heavy and maybe the success metrics aren't as high so anything they can get back from it in terms of viewerships is a win and then if they get a bonus and it becomes an international hit like Squid Game did they can then easily commission a season two and ride that into the sunset maybe that's a thing because it's interesting that they haven't even discussed because the Squid Game guy said the same thing he didn't even think about a season two. He had a rough plan, but it wasn't something he discussed in at length with uh, Netflix. But for some reason, it just hit, and then boom, it took off. And then you know now Netflix are offering those guys bonuses and whatnot and changing their contracts. Da, 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 da. So yeah, Hellbound season two may be coming out very soon. But I definitely recommend you check it out if you're again stuck for things to watch and you're bemoaning the lack of quality now on modern streaming platforms at the moment. Definitely check out Hellbound on Netflix. Definitely one of the better series. Again, like I said, I'd much prefer to watch it with subtitles. I don't like dubbed versions. I think you lose a lot of the essence and the feel um, for the original series, especially without hearing the native speaker speak. I know you don't understand the language. Most people don't if you're not Korean or you don't understand the language, but definitely it does add something to the overall experience. So definitely recommend you check out Hellbound, available now on Netflix. Uh...